Welcome back to CTV News. Well, more than 10% of hillside owners have rejected full compensation for their red zone properties. That compares to nearly every red zone in the city accepting theirs. Despite an extended offer, hillside red zone owners have been more likely to reject crown compensation than other areas of Christchurch. 407 out of the 455 owners in the quake damaged Port Hills took up the offer of compensation, which expired last week. This is 89% compared to the 98% of red zoners across Christchurch who took up the offer. A number of counterclaims have been made by Port Hill residents, unhappy with compensation amounts. Sarah says the area zoning was more complicated and took longer than for flatland, as it was determined by the risk to life of potential rockfall, cliff collapse and landslip. The Court of Appeal ruled last month owners with restricted access to a property because of rock or land damage would not be entitled for a total loss claim with their insurer. Owners of vacant, commercial and uninsured properties in the Port Hills red zones are yet to receive a Crown offer. Dara says public consultation on the future use of the Christchurch red zones will begin later this year. And joining me in the studio now with an update on this and more is Dion Swiggs from rebuildchristchurch.co.nz. Good evening Dion. Good day Chris. Thanks for joining us. First question in terms of the Port Hills, some certainty at least there's clarification, either you take the offer or you don't. Uh, red zone properties, we know the outline of that now. Uh, what's your analysis of this? Yeah, so now we've got the, the red zone offer has been complete, so no more offers. Uh, we've got about 57 people in the, uh, the, the Port Hills that have decided to stay, but there's 300 and, uh, 417 people that have decided to take the offer, which means there's 417 people that have residential properties that will be demolished. Sarah just released it, they've actually demolished 100 properties in the red zone, uh, Port Hills red zone, over the last couple of years, so there's still another 300 to go. So there's a lot of work going on, but at least it's certainty. Yes, there is work going on, but as you say, still a lot to go, still a lot of houses to come down too. Yes, yeah, so about 300 more in the in the Port Hills red zone, and I think there's about 1,500 uh, residential red zone in the flatland houses to go. Would you say the speed of uh, the efforts when it comes to Port Hill red zone, including uh, the demolition, has it been fast enough, do you think? Are you surprised by either the speed or lack of Dion Swigs? Uh, the speed is definitely one of those things where it's, it's, it is very complicated to, to demolish these houses. It could have got a lot faster, I mean, just get these houses down because some of them have been very uh, unsafe. But we are getting them down. Now that there's a bit of certainty around exactly what houses are going to stay and what houses are going to go, I think we'll start to see a lot more speed up in that. Let's discuss infrastructure. Some positive news depending on what way you look at it when it comes to the so-called main arterial route for those over in Banks Peninsula. Give me the latest. Yeah, so we've got the uh, Sumner Road uh, arterial link there that's they've just announced that it's going to be repaired. Some uh, amazing rocks on that road and, and, and the big problem there Chris is that it's the, it's the rock fall from the rocks above. So we went down to Port Littleton and actually had a look. There's a massive amount of rocks that they need to take away from that hill to open that. But it's really important to get that road up and running because it's the it's a strategic link for dangerous goods coming from the port so they don't have to close Littleton Tunnel so that it will keep the whole flow of the area running. We got, and I know you got to on your Rebuild website, a lot of um, people interested in knowing exactly about this. Were you surprised by just how interested people were by one road on the hill? 30,000 people saw this, it was absolutely incredible but I think a lot of people also, cyclists are really keen because it's, it's a really strategic road. People go up Dyers mm. Pass and then go through Littleton and come around Sumner. So for recreation, for all of those other reasons I think this is a very strategic thing and it's really good to get it done. Other things on the go at the moment, I was at the Integria Boat Sheds Cafe at lunchtime today, you cannot help but notice progress there with that footbridge. Um, I'm always trying to remember it was there beforehand, it was there beforehand wasn't <laughs> yes, it? Yes it was, so yeah. uh, Antigua, Bro uh, Antigua Boat Shed footbridge has finally gone back, it was really munted after the earthquakes, it's going to be reopened in six weeks, so it went back down, they laid it down about three days ago, in six weeks they're going to open that, so a real good strategic route again for cyclists and things through the city, but it also sort of is the start of the uh, the inner city uh, red zone, uh, sorry the, the watermark if you know the, yes. the, the Avon River precinct, so that's the start of it and that goes right throughout the city, so and again another, another symbolic part for the city's recovery. Dion Swig, some people are worried and a lot of people have fought me on news talks a bit about this, about their properties perhaps coming under another survey from the government, at mm. least a hundred more properties uh, that have, may have been damaged. What is this all about? Because people are worried now that their, their, their earthquake repairs from their 
insurance companies could be underway or their rebuilds or replacement of the mm. entire homes. But they're being told, uh, just hold off, the government wants to do yet another survey. That creates a lot of uncertainty in the market and for people with insurance issues and want their own home to be rebuilt or replaced. I mean, let, let's be clear with this. Uh, the people that were surveyed in the initial uh, 14, they were all in dispute in the first instance. So those ones were in dispute. So 13 of those were um, found that they had some sort of problem. One of those properties was from the insurance companies and what that was a minor compliance issue. The big problems here with the EQC foundation work. So this, I think this is where we're going to get a little bit unstuck. So we've got MB guidelines. MB guidelines were designed for homeowners who were cashed out to go and repair their own home. Now, if I was my own home repairing it, I would probably do that up to a very good standard even under the MB guidelines. Right. This is the exemption work. So if you've got exemption, you need to be very clear with your uh, contractor um, who's doing that work to make sure that it's actually up to the building code, not just under the exemption for MB. So if you're moving forward, that's what we mean to be looking forward to. All right. Uh, also, information now in the last week or so, Red Cross does a fantastic job. By the way, they have done a great job when it comes to the earthquake recovery effort in this city. I'm surprised they released a media release saying we're going to be holding workshops for those people interested in knowing about the effects of the earthquakes. Mm. My initial response was a bit late, but you think it's it's quite timely? I think this, yeah, exactly timely. I mean, if you, if you look at all the study that's been done, and this is really good uh, now that it's happening, 10 years is around the time for psychosocial recovery. So I think four years on, people are still struggling with this, and if they can self-identify that they would actually like to learn a little bit more, it's part of their recovery as well. So everybody goes through recovery at a different phase, but we're going to be still seeing people that need recovery work from the earthquakes in 10 years' time. All right, uh, also information just out recently, crunch numbers for me, how well are we doing in terms of earthquake repairs, how well are we doing in terms of insurance? You've got some new data that suggests, well, depending on what way you look at it, it's good and bad, Dion. Yeah, so we did the crunch the numbers for four years on, uh, so I looked at all of the different statistics that the EQC and the insurance companies have brought it all together to try and make some sense as a good, uh, good relay of that on Rebuild Christchurch. But in short, uh, EQC have settled 98% uh, of their claims, mm. but that, that's a little bit uh, misleading because their claims, you know, when we turn talk to properties, they've, they've actually done 63,000 undercap properties, so that's through the Fletcher's work. They've cash settled uh, 67,000 other properties, which is just under $15,000 work. There's still 10,250 properties that are still yet to go. They aren't settled. The 5,000 of those are in the, uh, the Canterbury Home Recovery Program. I think about 2,000 of those are in dispute of some form. To, uh, I think 1,500 of those are ready to go. And then um, and then you've got another about 2,500 that are in some sort of form of dispute. And we don't know exactly. I can't figure that out yet. Um, in terms of insurance companies, we're about 57% the way through with insurance companies. Uh, but remember, I think about 45% of those were cash settled from the from uh, the red zone payouts, which the government imposed on the uh, the red zone. Mm. Uh, so now we've got, I think there was uh, tw uh, sorry, 4,000 properties have been rebuilt or repaired. About half of those is half half mix on repairs and rebuilds at the moment. But in, in, in overall, in the insurance market for residential properties, we've had 13 billion dollars worth of cash settlements after four years. Oh, sorry, uh, settlements, not cash settlements. Um, but we've had about seven billion, uh, six billion dollars worth of work done. So there's still seven billion dollars worth of work in the residential sector alone to go uh, right now from right. just cash uh, from the settlements and there's still a lot of settlements so there's still about 40 percent worth of settlements to go within the insurance companies uh, and then if you're looking at the commercial sector we had 1260 so far demolitions within the cent central city we still have about 110 to go and we've got about 150 odd buildings that have been rebuilt and about a hundred on the way at the moment did you say there's still 110 buildings to come down in yeah. central Christchurch yeah. Either well, come I, down I, fully well or the good news is I saw one today that's coming down. I was so excited to film it on my cell phone. Dion Swix from rebuildchristchurch.co.nz. Nice Thank to you. see you.